All right, guys, we're alive. It's episode 254 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Joining me, co-host Jennifer Seymour. What's going on? Hey, everybody. Mr. Cannon's in the house. What's going on, Greg? Hey, everyone. How's it going? Doing good. Guest and star of the hour, AJ Hiss. Hitches in the house. There we go. Shit, that I almost ruined that one too. Just got a little, a little pause. It's like a little, like a trigger freeze on that on the last name. It's like the easiest name we had in 254 shows. Well, because it's a word. <laughs> right. So, and I still happen to get trigger freeze on it. Uh, well, well, there it is. Uh, what else we got? Uh, we got a couple things to talk about. Jennifer just burnt down a PRS match apparently. So we're gonna get into that. And talk a lot about uh, Limcat uh, custom firearms. Uh, but let's get into show sponsors here first. The folks over at Tactical Shit. Shop.tacticalshit.com for all your tactical shit needs. Okay, we got a discount code coming from them later on in the show, so stay tuned for that. But they got pretty much everything over on their website. Uh, the folks over at GSL Technologies. If you're in the kind of market for a new suppressor or just kind of add to the collection, GSL Technologies is where you want to look. That's gsltechnologies.com. All right, if you want to get any questions in, if you're watching on the YouTube side of things, top right-hand corner, you can uh, kind of join the conversation. Jen will scan those and send them over live throughout the show. And Canon's over on the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page. Uh, there's a post that just went up. If you prefer to use the comment section, you can throw those in there. And give Greg some action over on the Facebook side, right? Hello. Yeah. He doesn't get much action over there. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds like desperate times. <laughs> it is, it is. He does not get much action over on the Facebook side. So if you guys are feeling bad for him, head over there and show him some love over there. Uh, what else we got um, on the, oh yeah, the shooters mindset.com for all your shooters mindset. Stay tuned with the live shows, shop over there, check out our blog, training information, all that stuff at the shooters mindset.com. All right, let's kind of get into this one. Uh, AJ, for those who are unfamiliar with you, tell us a little bit more about yourself and what got you into competitive shooting. So my name is AJ Hitch and I am 34 years old and I live in Dayton, Nevada. And I started competitive shooting when I was about 26 years old. So I came into this game really late uh, in comparison mm -hmm. to a lot of the other female competitors that are out there. Um, but I, I did one match and I've been addicted ever since. So. What, what got you involved in that first match? I mean, usually a lot of people are, you know, scared to even, you know, they want to do it, but then they're like, uh, you know, and then someone pushes them and then they finally get hooked. So my husband was my pistol instructor before we, uh, before he even started dating, uh, before we really knew each other like that. So um, we started dating after, after he was teaching, he had taught me for probably about a year. Um, and then we got married and he used to set up these courses that we would we would consider them like a medium field course where it was maybe 16 rounds and there was two shooting positions with some with some forward movement right um but he used to set those up for me and i would love it i i try so hard and then i'd be like i know i can beat that time i know i can beat that time i, I know i can do that faster my reload sucked let's try that again and i'd run it over and over and over again and finally he said you know what i think you'd like competitive shooting and i said i didn't know there was such a thing I said, well yeah there is i mean so of course, that's the first thing I do. I get on YouTube. I look up female competitive shooters. Here comes Jesse Harrison. <laughs> Here comes Athena Lee. Here comes, you know, uh, Valerie mm -hmm. Lavenza from back then. And I was like, wow, these chicks got, they've got some game right now. They are awesome. I was like, that looks like a lot of fun. So I was like, yeah, we're going to do this. Absolutely. Went out for my first match and um, can't, I can't stop. Awesome. Jen, you were the opposite of that, right? You just kind of. You jumped in yourself. You just kind of get got into it. You didn't. No one dragged you into it, or how that work? Yeah, I didn't. I really had never held a gun or anything, and didn't really have any interest. I wasn't opposed to them, but had no interest. And then ended up, my daughter and I got approached downtown, and it kind of scared me. And I was like, Nope, never again. I'm not going to be in a vulnerable position where I can't defend my child. So I went and learned how to shoot. But yeah, my husband is not. It's just not his thing, so he doesn't really do it. So I kind of had to go out on my own and find ways to learn. There we go. Now, Jen, uh, something very valuable there or something we didn't know before. 26 is old for a female to start competitive shooting? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. I mean, when do you start, Greg? I don't – I, I mean, kind of got in this. Uh, 26, actually. I was 26 when I started. Yeah, I think I was 21. Yeah. 
I think uh, once I was able to legally like purchase a gun and felt comfortable or whatever, and then I just kind of dove into an IDPA match. I yeah. was 36 before I picked a gun up. Tank girl. Dang. Dang. <laughs> you look 36 now. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. I, uh, I got my first first gun when I was 11, um, but it was it was actually before I moved down here. Before I actually, I, I knew it was kind of a thing, but like I don't know. It just never happened until here. Yeah, yeah. Well, but I, speaking of oh, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I grew up in a very anti-gun household, so I did not even get to hold a firearm until um, high school when one of my friend's dads took me out shooting and it was the coolest experience of my life um, and I said you know that that's something that I would love to do again but unfortunately I have to wait while I'm uh, yeah. out of my house there we go I think did that it's very that I remember going out one time I had some busted guns man probably was some high point or uh, <laughs> and uh, and a site some it was like a Makarov caliber. I didn't. I don't. I don't even know what caliber it was. It just was very weird. But that kind of hooked me on. Just at an indoor range, or and do all that flashy stuff I see on the interwebs of people shooting competition. And that's how that kind of grew about. But speaking of kind of burning it down now, Jen was at this PRS match here in what really northern Florida and did really really well. And you can see it from watching the video. Just the confidence and I don't know. I was like, dang, you're getting really good. It was kind of cool. Um, I mean, I didn't win it or anything. Don't get me wrong. But there were a lot of really good shooters there. And I was 75% of the winner, which is the highest I've been. And that's how you get your PRS points. So I'll get 75 points for this match. But um, it was interesting because this match is very, very similar to uh, last year's match. And last year at CORE was my first PRS match that was not the gap grind where I had a coach basically the whole time. So it was my first solo match. So it was kind of neat to look back at some very similar stages and see, you know, oh, well, last year I timed out on that. I couldn't even finish it. And this year I didn't time out and I did pretty well. So it was really kind of cool to see, um, okay, well, I have improved every year. You know, it was neat. Yeah, It was a good time. I had fun. Yeah, I thought I, I just noticed a lot of confidence in the gun handling and moving. And, and when, obviously when you hear that, impact you know and you keep getting them pull the trigger impact impact and you're just on fire at that point once you hear a couple of those in a row it's game on in the zone yep yeah uh and greg didn't shoot it because uh apparently someone didn't let him know that the sign up was gonna go down so <laughs> but we'll stay on top of your own stuff then you know she's not gonna gonna let you know on the next one either so there you I'll go i'll tell you what <laughs> <laughs> yeah so everybody usually like bugs me are you gonna shoot this match you're gonna shoot this match i'm like no and i almost feel bad declining them i'm like dude no i'm not gonna it's not gonna go <laughs> you know what i mean it's like uh but maybe on the next one if it happens i'm more of that on the fly like i don't plan my matches out especially not anymore I used to but and then I'll, oh there's a major match here i'll just end up going and that's it and then when you do go, you like forget your vest or forget, forget your everything. And then we're usually, stuff. we're usually just winging the entire <laughs> match, which, Hey, as long as I shoot, finished a match and I had fun, that's where I'm at at this point. Like I don't get shit. I forgot everything. What's Ammo. the last match you shot? Uh, two, I think it was like two months ago in Homestead down here in uh, South Florida. Um, I actually did quite well in that match. I think it was fourth in my division. I don't know. It was, seventh overall not too shabby but you know whatever i didn't win any shiny wood <laughs> i was it wasn't you know no shiny wood for me if you're not first you're last if you're not first you're last exactly <laughs> um i think it was like two three weeks ago aj you announced that you started working for a limcat firearms right limcat customs yeah um congratulations on that by the way that seems to be a big accomplishment obviously um, what do, what do you do for them? And have you been, you've been shooting their guns for quite a few years now, right? Yes. So I actually started shooting for Johnny. Um, I, so before I was sponsored by him, I always believe in, um, really being passionate about the things that you're sponsored by or the things that you, you seek out sponsorship with. And I purchased two guns from him. I, I purchased a single stack and an open gun. And, um, I decided from that moment on, there was nothing else for me. There was there was no other gun that was going to be out there for me. I loved it. I was addicted to it. They felt good. They shot well. They were reliable. Um, mm -hmm. 
so I shot those for about a year and then about five years ago, he picked me up and I started shooting on his team, which that was the biggest milestone I would have to say for me was getting picked up, put on his team because I'm standing next to people like JJ, JJ Ricasa and Casey Acevio, I mean, Athena Lee, Scott mm. Green, which I, I actually was there before Scott, but still, I mean, you're sitting at a table with very heavy hitters. So um, it was just this last year we started talking about me working there uh, because they needed help around the office and the shop and doing, you know, things here and there. And so I said, yeah, absolutely. I'll come yeah. work for you. And he's like, no way you would. And I said, yeah, absolutely. I, I'd love to come work for you, Johnny. And uh, I truly mean that because I, I'm sure everybody knows that family is very, very, very tight knit, right? That shop is owned and run by Johnny and Julian and Christian works there. And as far as other employees go, it's unfortunately it's family. So when they asked me to come work there, I really felt like I had earned a seat at his table. And I was like, yes, I will absolutely come do that. People that I love to death, doing something I love doing, talking about stuff I love talking about. Sounds terrible. Yeah. <laughs> the dream. There job. we go. I mean, yeah, yeah, for real. And then here's the thing. Uh, we're, I have never, I know on the West Coast where you're, that's a little bit more popular to see his guns and his equipment. Um, but on the East Coast, I can, I can, I have never seen one of his guns, let alone handle one. Obviously, I've seen it on the internets and on the inner, you know, all that, but I've never seen another competitor shooting it or anything like that. So I never really got a chance to hold one or do anything with it. They, I mean, they look out of this world. It, it's almost like if, you know, a Space Force kind of just, you can't really compare it to anything else out there. It don't look the same. It just looks totally different, which I like. I like the uniqueness. I like, like the, the, the cool of it. Um, but why, why, why do you think that it is? We, you know, we don't see, I don't know if it's a, just, we're on the other side on the East coast and it's just, you know what I mean? We see more of those local builders, the Shea Kai's and those guys down here, obviously, cause he's local. He's local. Why do you think that is? Yeah. Right. Same thing with, with SV, uh, SV guns. You're going to find those more in the, in the central and Texas place, you know, because that's where it's popular. People know more about it there. Um, there are some shooters that are on. Uh, that shoot over in your guys' area. It's few and far between though. I do agree with that. Um, and I really wish we could somehow get our product out there. The problem is, is when you go to sponsor a match or um, something of that nature, you go to the people that you know to sponsor that match. So you want, you know, you want your heavy hitters that people are going to recognize like for your area, whatever mm -hmm. custom gun builder it is, they're going to go see that person versus having a limb cat match all the way in Florida. Right. So that, that is a little hard to get that, um, that brand recognition out there, but uh, I, I'm sure it'll happen. I'm sure it'll happen in time. We're working. There we go. Hard. There we go. There. I mean, obviously, over the years, the the kind of the firearm from from Johnny has expanded. I mean, at least at least in my eyes, it has. We're doing. We're seeing PCC rifles. The shotguns, I think, has been around here and there, but I you think you're starting to see a little bit more of those. The pistols have been around for a long time. Um, well, what is the cost and, and expected wait time? if we wanted a build from him? So four to six months on a custom build pistol. Um, we, we, we build 70% of our guns from our own parts, right? So we have to fab all of those, including we do all the frames. We do custom serial numbers, everything else that you can imagine. When you talk about steel grips, we put those on there. We, we have to, you know, machine those as well. It's just very time consuming when you consider the amount of work that has to go in to produce certain parts. Um, and I, I couldn't even believe the other day we were talking about it. these magwells take a half an hour a piece. I didn't believe that half an hour. A piece. So it's, it's a lot of machine time is what that takes up. Um, yeah. So we're like four to four to six months or did I get that right? Yep. Four to six months. Yeah. You're, look, you're looking pistols. at five grand for an open gun. That's what you're looking at. And about three to go for a rifle. Yeah, that's not, that's not bad. For some reason I thought they were a little bit, a little bit more than that, but that's actually not bad. No. Um, what, uh, we got a couple live here. What you got something, Greg? Yep. I got a shout out from Tony. Um, he said, Anthony, Greg, Jennifer, and AJ smash your shooting goals for 2019. Good people. Good luck to all this year. I well, appreciate that, Tony. What else we got? I got a couple people just commenting. Hey, Chipotle, man. Mario Mosen is talking about me. Yeah, I haven't checked into one in a while. Just kind of, I go there still. Oh, now we got a question. What do you got? 
Uh, Daniel wants to know, how do you train for when your AR receiver extension breaks in the middle of a stage? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Go ahead. Give us that story. Oh, that was great. Okay. That, that was a damn shit show. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, we had to engage some offhand targets that were approximately 130 out. They were big square gongs, so it was not it was not that challenging. And I shoot and I miss and I shoot and I hit and I shoot and I hit and I go to shoot one more, the last one, and it goes, I miss and I go to take a second shot. And the next thing you know, my receiver, my upper receiver and my lower receiver are now detached from my buttstock. And I mm. went, I look down and I see the buffer and I went, oh, I can fix this. <laughs> and I tried to send another round and, you know, Shockingly enough, it didn't work. Shoving it back together didn't work. Um, oh. So I had to ground it. Uh, and it was a very strange grounding experience too because the butt stock was coming off. And normally when you ground again, you're flipping the safety and throwing it in the bucket, right? You're not anywhere close to it. You're just getting rid of it. I went to go do that. And I saw this like yard sale of parts happening. And I went, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And I like, shoved them all back in the bucket. And I said, okay, I guess I'm going to pistol now. <laughs> you <can't> oh. really... <laughs> you seven FTEs. Damn. Damn. Oh, Ouch. that sucks. So, so I know the, the, the company that made that too was like right on top of it and trying to, to, to make it right. They, uh, did they ever figure out what caused it or? I actually, so, uh, that particular company was very, very good to me throughout this process. He got in touch with me right away. He was sending me messages. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened. Is everybody okay? Like, and you, it was a genuine concern for your customer, mm -hmm. your consumer at that point. Um, and he did what he could to take care of me really. And honestly, and truly he did. Yeah. Um, he replaced the part. He got it. He got it back to working, but they are, they stand by their product and I sent them the tube. So I actually sent that. I desperately wanted to keep that thing as a badge of honor because every slide I've ever cracked <laughs> is hanging in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I feel like I had earned that one, but I sent it over to him uh, for them to check it out. And it just broke. It was the very last thread uh, before you hit, before you hit the buttstock. Uh, okay. It was the very last thread that did it. So it's over four seasons of hard use mm -hmm. is what did that. And it was a very early on model too. I do. I do remember that. <laughs> hmm. Wow. Dang. That's yeah, crazy. Well, at least you took care of it. So yeah. there we go. Um, so we got, uh, what do we, you, you're really, I mean, in the pre pre-show, I mean, you were showing us some of the P the PCC rifle and some of the accessories you have with it. Really cool stuff. We want to get into that, that model. What are we looking at and what are you, what are you running right now? Okay. So there are two different kinds of, uh, the PCCs. Uh, there's the PCC Tron, which they're, they're all Trons. Um, there's just two different ways you can do the barrel configuration. The most common, I'll actually show the most common one first that people are going to recognize is the 16 inch barrel, right? With a two inch compensator. That's exactly what you're looking for when you see a normal PCC, right? Um, and I chose to go with this particular model because it ran better with the ammo I was using for my open minor load. So when I shoot two by four or I shoot um, two gun, I can actually use the same ammo for two guns and I'm not messing with it. Because that really, as everybody knows, once you start traveling for three gun, your ammo, it just turns into a giant pile. Mm -hmm. So this is a newer version of our stuff right now. And this is the 10 and a half inch barrel with a pin and welded pop, right? This is a six inch comp. So this, this keeps the gun legal. So you don't have to worry about that. It's not an SBR. You don't stamp it or anything. Um, but one thing I will tell you about this design is that really when you think about nine millimeters and how much gas you're expelling. A lot of that has to go to the direct blowback system, but then the rest that's coming out is really only, you're only expelling gas out of those baffles right there mm -hmm. and the side ports. So it's got these side ports to keep it level, muzzle rise, target pass through, and the baffles as well. This is purely aesthetic down here. So it's just a piece that looks cool to give you the extra inches that you need. But that's mm. what you yeah, when I, I think I was looking at the website on some of these, I'm like, 10 and a half inch barrel, okay, so six inch comp, he's pinning it, that's how it's happening. I'm like, holy shit. But it looks it looks awesome, though. I mean, this all the work that, that 
I mean, I don't, I'm just, you know, if he's drawn, I'm just, the whole process of just that thing, you know, just that part being made, the comp, it looks like, like a hell of a lot goes into it. Just like from the drawing board, hey, what am I going to do that's unique? Got to draw this up. Let's do some wicked. Let's put it in the computer. All right, let's 3D do it and then let's machine it. And it's like, and here we go. We got something. We got something that's real. Here so we got something real. They also wanted to do this to keep the shooter in mind. They reduced the weight that was out front. Right, because you before we had a very solid thick barrel. We did definitely do not use pencil barrels. Um, it was a very thick barrel, and then um, you had your compensator out here, which was heavy, and it would cause eventually over fatigue. You, you've got a little bit of dip in your weight or dip in the front because of that weight. So what they did is they they centralized the weight closer to the receiver, the lower receiver, so that weight was a little bit more manageable for you and less fatiguing. So that was. They do a lot of really cool designs based on shooter demands, based on, you know, what's actually going to perform, what's going to work, what 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 they're going to get the most um, provable and repeatable results out of, too. So even down to the rifle, that is kind of made to order or those like a re ready to rock, like no, buy it, order. check out, made to order. Made to order. There we go. Every time. Yeah. So we're, there we go. Um, shotgun stuff. And notice it's not on the website, but... That is a thing that is being made. You can call up and kind of acquire about it, right? Yes. Uh, right now they're doing, they're building Vepers. They're, they're building Vepers and then he turns them into to the Vepper Cat, which is 12 gauge. Um, I shoot an older model of his. I shoot a Sega. Um, mm -hmm. I was supposed to have a Vepper. He built me a Vepper. Uh, but I, something about this Sega, the first time I picked this gun up, I was in love with it. I just, it just makes my heart race. So I was like, Johnny, you can keep the Vepper, the brand new Vepper. I don't care what you do with it. And I will take this used Sega from you because I love this gun. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's just fast. Oh, yeah, there was, <laughs> yeah. There was a time I I was thinking about building, a, you know, putting together an open shotgun, not building it, but, you know, buying a Vepper. The Segas were kind of a little bit hard to find, but they weren't super expensive and they weren't, you know, you can get them. Um and I was, I think I was having a conversation with uh, Hunter Kale, and he was like, he was like, oh, you know, the Vepper, you know, we were having this debate on which one should we go with, the Sega, the Vepper, and why one was better or the other than me. They both looked the same. I was like, okay, which one do I get? I think I ended up getting a Vepper because it was on the local shop. I got it at a good deal. And ended up not turning it into an open gun because I saw how much that was going to cost the wallet. And just, <laughs> it, it just didn't make, it just didn't make sense at the time. I'm like, uh. Maybe this is a bad idea. So at least right now for me to it's a, it's to a good idea. Right. So I was like, you know, I ended up just selling this the, it was just a stock vector vepper and I ended up trading it for like an optic for the uh AR fifteen that I had and I was building at a time too. But do you know what the real differences are between those and why would one go with the other over the other deal? So I had this conversation, I believe, with Scott Green, and I can't remember one of the lowers can take both Sega and Vepper Max, and the other one can only take its proprietary part uh, based on the, the feed, how it's feeding out of the magazine. Mm -hmm. I really don't remember which one was which. Man, that's terrible. I don't remember that. Uh, but yeah, it, it's like it's not. It's like it's one of those things. Like it's they're very very similar, but it's like one. It's like is that, and then that's why I prefer that over the one of the other. It's just like one of those things. Right. So right. Um, I, I know mean, that they they build them very similar in the in the aspect of you still have the mid length barrel, um, the mid length the mid length comp that you're going to have that big flare out thing, um, and then you're going to have at the end you're going to have the regular comp. So all of the things that are going to dramatically affect your shooting are all being built the same. Mm. There we go. Greg, you got a live one? Yes. Um, Tony, Tony was wanting to know what brand of optic is that in your PCC? Ah, that's a Neotech. Nice. Yeah, that's Neotech. I'm actually sponsored by them, and um, I love their holographic sites. It's, it's one of those things. People love them. They don't love them. Mm -hmm. them kind of a thing, uh, but I... I Love these. I run them on my limited rifles. I run them on my PCC. I run it actually on my shotgun too. So it's all the same. I'm a huge fan of the the Eotech too. That's what I before I even got into competition. It's you know well Eotech seems good. I'm going to put one on it. Um, and on a on a base stage, um, you know, I have terrible vision. 
So, you know, trying to shoot 200 yards with that, uh -uh. but, um, <laughs> you know, inside of a hundred, it's fast, it's easy, you know, yes, if it's negative 37 degrees and something, my point of aim will ship. I'm shooting inside of a hundred yards with it. Um, it. It's, it's dead on. I've changed the batteries like once maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the EOTACs also. Yeah, yeah, and let's face it, most of us are indoor cats. Like we are not going outside for that nonsense. So exactly. I, I'm not, I'm not halo jumping. I don't. But none of that applies to me. Yeah, unless you're Josh uh, Freilich or Frolic or whatever we call uh, him, I always ruin it. But he he knows it, and then he's out there dry firing and or whatever he's doing. The fucking snowing. I'm like, what? what is going on? Blasting away in his backyard of Minnesota every day. I was off his porch. Yeah. <laughs> it must be nice. <laughs> yeah, it must no, be nice. it's freezing. Yeah. yeah, but then you can go right in your house. You're like, oh, this is too much. I'm going to go inside for a I don't know. We, we have a, a facility up in up in Minnesota, and I think it's a bit more north than where he's at. Um, but every time we send someone up, they're like, you know, how how is your trip? And it's just like, dude, my, my boogers froze walking to my car. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it takes – obviously, I mean, it takes a little bit getting used to – I'm sure he's very much used to it. I don't know. Do you ever get used to it? I never even lived in the cold long enough to know. All I know is I've ever got up to shoot a match up north where it was snowing and it was, I think the coldest I was around and was 21 degrees when we shot up a match up in Minnesota. And I'm telling you, we had, luckily that car was a remote start because we would start it, wait for it to warm up, and then we're <laughs> running from the hotel side door to the car with the heat, you know, the car's already started. That way you can crank the heater up right away. And it's already, you know, we didn't have, we weren't prepared for that. <laughs> we, we had, we had some heavy clothing, but it was, it was not enough. And then we were hoping we won't bust our ass and slip on the, on the ice cold floor <laughs> on the way to the car. I don't know anything about slipping and busting your ass. Yeah. going. <laughs> we did not slip, but we were mindful of it. We're like, if we really take off, there's a good chance we, we bust our ass on the way to the car, which isn't good neither. Do you remember the same match, AJ, that we were at and we got lost looking for Walmart and then the second day it was canceled, so we went and got pedicures? Yes. Oh, and do yes. you remember walking back in the hotel? Yeah. <laughs> I ended up on my butt. <laughs> you know, those, they give you those shoes that are like not really paper, shoes, paper, like paper. foam. They're yeah. like paper. Uh, mind you, this was in a hurricane. This was in the middle of uh, Hurricane Joaquin, I think is what that one was. Um, and our all of our stages were six feet underwater. <laughs> so um, we, it, needless yeah. to say, it was very wet outside and she went running towards the door. <laughs> Didn't yeah. exactly make it there upright. <laughs> what, uh, what, what match was this? The, the lady, ladies. The Brown lady three gun. Yeah, the Brownell lady three gun and 2015, I think. It was the second in the series. Yeah, I think yeah. It, that thing skirted like right along the coast of Florida. And you guys are preparing for this match. And I'm looking at the news. I'm looking at the match okay. date. I'm like, oh, shit, that's not going to be good. I think that it. Did it really run through? Did it run through? It, did it, or did it just like brush along that state that you guys were shooting in? I think, I think it hit, it, or you guys shot it right after it hit, or, or I think it I brushed know. through, and we just got like enough of the bands that we had, like enormous. Rain. The first day we shot in so much rain, I've never shot in that much rain. Like literally, there was a shotgun stage that to go out and reset all the steel. We literally were getting stuck in the mud. Like our feet oh. were stuck in the mud, and we were having to go out there and pull each other out of the mud. Oh, and yeah. like it's sucking our shoes off into the mud, and then you're having to like pick your shoe up and do like this and hop around and get it back on your foot and try to not right. get stuck in the mud again. And then they finally, the second day, Clinton House was like underwater. Like you couldn't even access yeah. the range. Completely underwater. I also remember it was like the land shark run. If you you had to stay on top of the mud <laughs> to, to get down there, that was. People were, people were eating it all day. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but none of the ladies quit, and we didn't no. bitch about it. We just no. went out there and did it, and it, yeah. And you weren't dry. By the end of the day, I had a raincoat on. I had, you know, water-resistant pants on. It did not matter. I was soaking wet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I looked like a wet rat. We all did. It was worth it, though. That was a good, that was a good match. Yeah, it was. It was fun. Yeah, uh... Mm -hmm. I don't know. If, if I would have knew it was going to be like that, I probably would have just said, um, no thanks, right? But I guess we, you yeah. 
We went and got pedicures. There you go. Fun. You got to make the best of it for sure. I want a gun at that one, so it was good for me. There, <gasps> yeah, trip worth it. Yeah. Definitely. There we go. Um, we're going to get into discount corners here. Uh, try to save you money from some great companies who support the Shooter's Mindset show. Uh, Jen, you usually start us off. What do you have? Yep, you can get 10% off at Carbon Arms to get some shotgun shell caddies with TSM 10 at carbonarms.us. You can also get 10% off of a jersey at Under Industries or a jacket like my jacket back there. Um, so check them out on Facebook and message Under Industries and mention the Shooter's Mindset to get 10% off. And the Shooter's Mindset store, you can get 10% off with Jen TSM 10. There you go. Uh, Greg, what do you have? I have you can save 10% off at Overwatch Defense using the code CANON10. Um, shoot them an email, give them a call. Um, you get an awesome Cerakote job. Um, I'm about to send the Glock 35 out, hopefully sometime soon to get that done. Um, and they got all sorts of other cool stuff up in the store as well. There we go. Is that, that's all you got, man? You're missing one. No? That's what I was say. Did you say Overwatch? Is that's that what I said. That's the first one you just said. Okay. Yeah, I guess I thought, had, I, th I thought, he I thought you had two. Yeah. Uh, All right. I got a couple on my end. Uh, the shop at tactical shit.com TSM 10 save you 10% off web website wide. If you're in the St. Peter's, Missouri area, you can yell it at the cashier at their retail spot. They'll give you 10% off um, your order. What do we got? Uh, Terran tactical innovations, Terran tactical innovations.com for all parts, uh, base pads, kind of all that, all that deal. TSM 10, 10% off. It does not work with gunsmithing. Like you can always reach out to me and I'll get you in contact with the right people. Usually it works if you do it that way. But if you just go ahead and type it in on like an STI or a Glock combat master, they might be calling you to collect the payment, the remainder of the payment on those um, folks over at umtactical.com, all your rifle needs uh, and holster needs TSM uh, TSM 10 at umtactical.com. And that's all I got. AJ, any on the fly kind of from your sponsors or any promotions you know that's going on right now? Yeah, so um, LAG, always I have a 10% discount. It's AJ10. If you guys happen to forget that, uh, hit me up and I'll send it right over to you. There it is. What did they do over there? It's holsters, right? Yep. Yeah, boom. Yep. All things Kydex. All things Kydex, AJ10. What else we got? Uh, I think we didn't – did we talk about the pistols? We did, You didn't show any. Um, these things are – are pretty wicked. You got any of the Razor Cats or any of those his pistols in front of you? Um, I don't have them in front of me. I do have a couple in my next room. And there we go. Um, and what's the difference between the Rage Razor Cat and the Storm Cat? Is there just looks? Is it just aesthetics or? So yeah, I was I was trying to get you guys a finished Razor Cat and a finished Storm Cat, but unfortunately, the only finished Storm Cat is in the hands of Scott Green right now. And he's not sharing that with anybody. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, the difference between them. So essentially when they build a gun, every single one of the guns is built with the same principle and the same theories in mind. The things you're going to see that change the most are going to be the slide, the slide to comp cut. Um, you're going to see a difference in somewhat of the comp. Right. Um, but the big difference between the storm cat, and the Razor Cat is the comp, how that particular comp was made. Um, the Razor Cat has three baffles in it. It also has the turbo, which has the port that goes underneath. The first two baffles comes from the first baffle, goes underneath, and then shoots out the sides, which gives it the turbo compensator. Um, that one is a three, again, a three baffle. Scott's new Storm Cat is only a two baffle. So if you are shopping around and you, you're adamant on shooting 38 Super Comp or 38 Super, any of those, um, that would be a round that I would, that would be a, a platform I would stay away from if that's what you're going to shoot. Uh, you get a longer, longer burn time with those powders. You're, you're actually expelling gas towards the end of that round. Whereas a nine millimeter, you know, it, my major ammo, you pour powder in it, you brush it off the top and you cram on a bullet. Right. So you right. have to, that hits, that spikes real hard, real fast. So most of the time you're losing a lot of your nine major gas by those first two baffles anyways. So that's, that's intentionally what the, essentially what that gun was built to do was to shoot my nine major. So the storm cats pretty much nine millimeter razor cat, your 38 super comps, your 38 supers. And nine. 
And that, on. that, that cop is going to be more versatile for that. There anything, we go. We got anything three baffle is going to be good for everything. Now the, I know Johnny comes up with these names probably, but I thought, uh, the Ra I thought the Razor Cat was kind of like the JJ Ricasa like special edition deal. Was that? Are we going to see a, like an AJ Hitch, just <laughs> you know race gun model with your name on in some kind of you know AJ Cat? I know we got to make it ring and rhyme. Somewhere. Um, I, I I'll tell you what I have to win something big and he'll make it. <laughs> there we go. That'll be awesome. Right? I'm sure I'm sure people would want it. Yeah, so. it's, they're they're good guns. They're definitely a lot of fun. There we go. Uh, what else we got? I, well, we, I noticed that you're uh, sponsored by Mac Cosmetics, right? So that's that's interesting in the fact that it's it's not in the industry, right? And you know, so what is what's what's the deal with that? And what's your advice on kind of picking up sponsors outside the shooting industry? Um, so I was not a I, I didn't spend a whole lot of my life wearing makeup until recently, and I have um, some hyperpigmentation in my skin, so it's made it to where. I constantly have to cover up my face or somebody's like, Hey, you know what? You've got something like right here. And I'm like, actually, no, that's just my face. So I started wearing makeup frequently and it, I will tell you, Mac, um, changed, changed a lot about myself and my confidence because they make a lot of products that are very good for, for what we do in shooting. They make a waterproof foundation, which I know that sounds ridiculous, but I've actually jumped into a pool, gotten back out and my foundation was exactly the same. So it's definitely worth it. For me and i was like i got really passionate about it and i i wanted to learn how to do it more and more and more and finally i went in there and the girl said hey you know what you are a sponsored shooter you should definitely apply for sponsorship mac they would consider you i said no way there's no way right. no this way. is two way we are in the anti two way days right yeah there's no way and i actually applied i sent in um some of my photos from my magazine article that i did for front site and there were some action shots in there as well, because I wanted it to be explicitly clear that that was what they were going to see their makeup being tagged in. And the next thing you know, I signed a contract for one year. And then I came back this year and I signed there. This is the longest contract they offer, but I, I signed for two years this time with them. And it's been really, really fun. It's It's been really fun. Um, I think if, if people are seeking sponsorships outside the industry. First of all, I think that's a great avenue. Let's get people involved in this that are normally not involved, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I think when people look for a good, a good person to sponsor, they're looking essentially for a brand ambassador, right? They don't need the best looking person. They don't need the best performing person. They want somebody that is going to represent their brand in their image. And uh, the way to start that is be very passionate about it. And I was, I was very passionate about doing that and it, it paid off it really did it paid off big time yeah that's all it's always awesome to see you know companies that are not in the industry support the 2a thing the shooting thing you know right away you can think of you know oh no i'm not even not even gonna even look at what you sent you know what i mean it's just right. an automatic no right. um and i know that stuff ain't it's not cheap all right <laughs> you don't want you don't want to get i know i'm know, jealous i wear back you don't want to cut into that thing, you you know. You'll be spending a few hundred dollars on like you walked out with were like three things. Like, what, <laughs> Look, what happened here? Whenever my car got broken into, I, I've been wearing Mac for probably ten years, and like six years ago, my car got broken into, and I, it was after work. I was really upset, and so I came home, and we're doing everything. And the next morning, we get up to go to the bank, and report my checkbook stolen and all that stuff. And so we're getting ready to do it. And I go out to my car to get my makeup and it's gone because it was in my work bag that got stolen out of my car. And I just, th at that point I just started crying. My husband's like, what's wrong? I was like, they took everything, my work bag, my stethoscope, my, even my makeup. And he was like, it's okay. I'll go buy you some more. It's not a big deal. I was like, okay. It was more, it wasn't about the makeup. It was more that I felt an intrusion of my privacy. But anyway, so we go to the Mac counter. <laughs> and I'll never forget. My husband was like, oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> like he thought, oh, we'll just go buy like five dollar makeup. He thought it was nothing. Like two hundred dollars later, he was like, "Ouch!" Now I know why you were crying. But you know how it is, AJ. Like I mean, like there's mascara and lipstick and blush and eyeliner and foundation and powder. And so like normally, like one thing will run out, you go get the one thing, but everything else you still have some of. You know, lipstick. But then when it's all gone all at one time, 
you have to go replenish everything. You better rip that bandaid off, girl. <laughs> Just yeah. do it. It was funny. He was not, he was like, oh my God. I was like, I told you. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. Now, we got a couple things in the live feed. What do we got? Hmm. Yep. So addicted to life. Not sure who that is, but he says, can you have Mr. Hitch set up the hatchet target? Ah, yes. Yes, that will be coming. So I had to stop throwing uh, my hatchets and my knives because of my ACL tear. Uh, I couldn't put weight on the front to get him out anymore. Um, I did do it sitting for a while, but it just lost its effect. Like I wasn't having as much fun getting him down there. Uh, but yes, we will do that. I will do that again. God, I love that. Thanks for, <laughs> for still remembering that. Uh, and Jay Christensen says, hey, y'all. Um, and Razor hey, Jay. JB. He just Razor... heard the bag well from me. Oh, good. awesome. And just to let you know, I made sure that got out last night for you, buddy. So it's on the oh. way. There you go. Yep. Good service. And <laughs> Razor JB says, what's up, ladies and gents? And mm -hmm. oh, addicted to life again says those Reno shooters are nuts. Wind, rain, snow, heat, they never stop shooting matches. Yep. That's the and, truth. and he wants to know if you have any recommendations on skin protection during matches. So obviously with hyperpigmentation, I've had to do a little bit of more research on how to protect your skin. Sunblock is not sunblock is not sunblock. It's all very different. Um, unfortunately, if you're trying to block the sun from you, the best thing you can do for yourself is a dual protection. So it's do something with his, with zinc in it, like a clear zinc, because that's a physical barrier. And then on top of that, I would use regular SPF. Um, but nothing beats covering yourself up, very honestly. Long sleeves, um, obviously ventilated long sleeves, but long sleeves, baseball hat, things like that. There we go. Uh, what else we got here? We cleaned up all that. Appreciate all the questions, guys. That really helps keep the show rolling and going smooth. Oh, we talked a little bit about your a knee injury that you had, right? And how you know that's obviously a major injury, and getting back to competing, right? How yeah. how do you feel was the right time? Obviously, talking to your doctors, probably the key thing. But how do you feel about it getting into it? So um, I actually tore it on the range. Uh, I was shooting PCC one day at a local match, and we had a, an array of targets that was through a port, and then we had an uh, kind of like a hard corner. And you just had one target right on the outside of this wall. So I did my walkthrough and you had to break down your rifle and put it right back around the corner. So of course I took a darting step. My foot caught on a rock like this. My femur kept going and my tib fib stopped. So it actually tore clean off my femur when that happened. Ouch. And the my bone, legs hurt. <laughs> yeah, it, it was not. So I was like, ow, that kind of hurt. That kind of really hurt. I was really kind of surprised by that. I was like, you know what, but I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably like an age injury at this point. Um, but it wasn't, I waited two months to have it diagnosed. I shot 10 matches on it. Um, a nationals championship, two other level two championships, PCC, a shotgun on it. And then I said, I can't do it anymore. Um, I had something called a bone marrow edema. So, and Jen knows what this is, but it's essentially a stress fracture. So your bone is fracturing from the inside out because your bone marrow is accumulating fluid. And it's just putting pressure on the wall. That's about when I had to stop and have my surgery done. <laughs> um, I had that done in June. And the typical return to sport is eight months to a year. I couldn't wait that long. So we bartered. <laughs> <laughs> I bartered my medical care. They said, no, you can't go. I don't think it's a good idea. I said, okay, well, let's just give it 30 days. And you can, you can put a pin in this and come back to it. Um, 30 days later, I was like, okay, listen, these are the things I'm doing. Can I go? Can I go? My PT says, finally, he says, you know what? God, oh, you please wear your knee brace. <laughs> yeah. You're going to go whether I tell you not to. So please wear your knee brace. I yeah. said, okay, I can do that. Yes. Yes, I can. I mean, you shot a bunch of matches when it was pretty much gone. I, that's, that's surprising in itself. I mean, that injury, obviously, I don't. I don't know, you know, we, you know, I'm going to ignorance will go, just go straight to like football, right? You know, that injury, you're done. You don't usually that's a, you're out for a year yep. and you might be lucky to start the beginning of the next season. Once you get something like that surgery and all that other bullshit's coming with it usually. So to even go, I mean, obviously football shooting, not as physical, but obviously there's running and all that involved for you to go through that many matches and just kind of suck it up and still play. Pretty impressive in itself, right? 
And I, I actually titled in both of the level two matches too. So I felt very <laughs> good about that. I was like, yes, it wasn't all for nothing. <laughs> awesome. ACL um, is the uh, stabilizing. That's what stabilizes your knee. Yep. So and that's a, impressive that you could even run around and anything with it not stabilized. Well, it was like this. <laughs> yeah. It was definitely very kind of wobbly and it was not. I, I will be honest with you. I had there were nights I had to fight to to make it through it because there were days I wanted to quit. Um, at nationals, from being sore all day, I after I would eat dinner, I would literally take myself on a walk because it hurt so bad. I couldn't sit down. I couldn't lay down. I couldn't nothing. So, at nationals, uh, when I shot, I would just wander around the parking lot, trying to just <laughs> stop the pain. It, it was bad. It was bad. That sounds pretty bad. Um, I see you upgraded your gun buggy from like a push cart to a to a side by side. <laughs> I did. How's that? How's that working out? So if well, it's like driving a Cadillac. Um, it's <laughs> it is so much fun. I have to say. So it's also kind of like a social experiment because everybody, even when you're shooting just like a single gun match, everybody throws their pistol stuff in the back of your car and you just back of the the mule and everybody just drives it up and it's very convenient. It's a very fun thing. Um, I will tell you right now, though, I, I am spoiled, <laughs> spoiled, because I just drive that thing around now everywhere. I wave at people when I go by them. Hi, have nice. a good walk. Have a good yeah. walk. Enjoy your walk. You can't jump on the back of this. No, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, yeah, I've got a few that I would have, I would have done about anything to have that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, walking up the the big hill at K and M with everything. Whew. You're right. And, and that's, you know, okay, so I hate to say this, but that's the name of this game a lot of times is is who can, the, it's the law of attrition, who can make it to the end. Mm -hmm. And when, when, you have a, when you have a car that takes you everywhere, um, it's kind of not the same as lug lugging around three bags with three guns in them that are incredibly heavy with all the ammo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I say I'm spoiled, that's what I mean. I, I definitely, <laughs> I'm not punished anymore. That's for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it is some some of these matches. I mean, you, you they it's like, man, I shot 14, 16 stages one time. Just and we're just talking pistol. We're not talking about three gun. Where you're logging, you have more gear, more guns, more ammo for each of those. The PRS thing, you're usually hiking up mountains and all types of weird terrain and all that type of stuff. But you know, about like I remember one of the matches. I think it was um at Smith and Wesson over. I believe it was in Connecticut, Massachusetts area. And by like stage 12, I was almost, I was like, th I was thinking about, geez, when are we going to finish this match? Like I was already, like it was in my head. Not saying that I was like, you know, obviously I was still having fun. We were shooting, bullshitting with the squad, all that stuff. But it was something I was thinking about instead of focusing on upcoming stage or whatever, you know, lo making sure my mags are all loaded going up there. I was thinking about shit. I'm really, t I'm, I'm, w I'm waiting for this to be over. Like, yes. I think I've shot, I think I shot enough already. Yep. Um, and once you start thinking about that, obviously there's probably some dude who had, I don't know, maybe he bought a couple extra more Gatorades that I did and ate better snacks on the way up or whatever he had, maybe a better method of hauling his pistol and all the stuff. But man, at that point I was toasted about 12 and we still had, I mean, six, like, you know, whatever, five, six, four stages left, whatever it was to shoot. So those, I was every one of those stages I was thinking about. Yeah. Okay. When, it, when's it, how many more stages we got? Yo. This is, we got two more stages left. Yeah. You know, all that conversation was going on. So yeah, I can uh, yeah. test that. And, and then, you know, if you, if you look over at like sporting clays, um, the, one of the local ranges that, that I shoot a lot of matches at, they have, uh, that's probably their biggest thing is, is uh, sporting clays and just shotgun shooting in general. And one weekend they're having some sort of a sporting clays tournament out there while we were having a, I think it was a USPSA. Um, and they split up the parking and it, they, they had USPSA parking here, um, whatever the name of the shotgun organization was, parking here. And in that parking lot, there was about three trucks without trailers on them. Everybody else had a trailer and they had their their side by side, their golf car. And we're all sitting here pulling out our baby strollers and our folding <laughs> wagons and stuff. I'm like, man, I thought I thought we were like the fancy folk around here, but apparently not. Apparently yeah. Not. I have still and then not there's PRS. Yeah. Then there's PRS where you carry everything. Not nah, because you spend like uh, 
you know, three, four grand on a gun, three grand on an optic. You ain't got no money left. <laughs> I ain't got no money left. I mean, the, 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 that, that over there. I mean, I had tortilla chips for dinner <laughs> after that one. Yeah. The shooter diet, yeah. ramen, ramen and potato chips. Uh, too much, too much, too much sodium. So just tips. What, what is the, what is that? The, the kind of go-to method in the, the PRS scene. Cause it, I do see some pictures of folks hiking up mountains and they seem to have some type of backpack on, but their rifles like attached to it or they're holding it. And then they're bringing all, is there like a company that's making something that usually everybody's using for that type of stuff or Not everybody's really. just winging it? Every, every old stock it. has, every old stock has the, uh, the bags that have, it's like a pocket in the outside of the backpack that the rifle will go in and it sticks out the top a little bit, or I just sling mine. I have my backpack with all my gear and then I sling my rifle and I carry my tripod. I say I, I either sling mine or just kind of carry it. One, one of the two. And but. lots of my bags are like hanging on the outside of my backpack. My shooting bags are like clipped on the outside. Mm. But at most PRS matches, they like pull up with a truck and deliver you hot lunch. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. There I we missed go. my calling. Right. We had like barbecue the first day at this match. It was really good. Mm. It was like rice and barbecue meat with the sauce you put on it. Oh, it was good. Boom. That sounds, <laughs> sounds like a good deal there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll be back. Yeah. Uh, so I first seen this uh, Scott Green, I believe, shared uh, a Magwell from Limcat, obviously on his probably on the Stormcat or whatever he had. I shared it on the Shooter's Mindset. It got a lot of traction on his side, got a lot of traction on the, the, the Shooter's Mindset, and people are like, where can I get one of these? And so it's pretty much the 2011 Magwell that Johnny has designed. And I, I swear, ever since I've seen that video, I've been meaning to pull all my guns with Magwells out and seeing if I can just completely insert a magazine just totally wrong, and it'll flip it back and go in. So, But not all Magwells are created equal. And you can kind of walk us through why that is. So first off, I made a deal with Scott Green that the next time he posts a video like that, he can come by and build the boxes and ship them out because that was a nightmare. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Post full boxes. I have decided if I don't make it with Johnny for some reason, if he's like, hey, AJ, we really enjoyed having you, but leave. Um, I'm going to fold pizza boxes for a living because I got that down now. Like that is the fastest thing that I can do. <laughs> Boom. It was a nightmare. The Magwell thing was blown up. Yes. So that did, it really did. It, it picked up a lot of traction, which was good. It's good for business. Good for everybody. Um, so this is in a traditional Magwell that you can see that is normally what we use, what everybody uses really the standard. Um, all it does is it, it's a fit and then it flares out. It uses the existing opening for our, from the grips, right? And it just flares it out. So you can be a little bit sloppier with it when you're going to load and you can hit it sideways and it's still going to go in. You can hit it this way. It'll still go in. It'll still feed correctly. The problem is with that is that there's a lot of time that goes into blending this out. So when you buy a custom gun, all those ridges have to be blended out. It has to, it has to be smooth again because your feed lips get stuck on it and it gets crammed in there sideways. So that's very tedious labor for that. The one other thing that's uh, negative about that is that it has, there's inevitable lip here that you cannot get rid of, right? It's a, it's the juncture between the magwell itself and your grip, okay? And it's it's really, really noticeable too when you use steel grips, which I'm not a steel person. But this is our new magwell. This is the brass version. We have three different types that it comes in. It comes in brass, it comes in stainless steel, it comes in um, aluminum as well. Um, brass is for those who really want that that static weight at the bottom of their gun, uh, you'll see it being sold a lot to people who shoot 40s with poly grips. Um, not so much with people that shoot with steel grips because then it's almost too much weight in the back end for the firearm. It doesn't balance correctly. But uh, this, this is the installation on this thing. It's ridiculous. Okay, you just said it. In. So as long as it doesn't have a proprietary part back here that would per what that would not match up with a regular like STI type gun. Um, this is actually just how you fit it on. So the one interesting thing about this is that it has removed, it has removed the, see how this one's flat? It's mm. completely flat and this one comes in. 
right? It's rounded and it comes in because what happens is, is that it sits in the grip in just this spot right here. And that's where the grip stops. The grip stops right there. And what our piece does now is it comes over the top of that grip, right? So we have eliminated their funnel and made our own, right? So here we have to use the grips, the grips funnel and whatever piece that was made with this. And at this one, we've eliminated that. So what Scott Green was demonstrating was anything from about, some people say 90, some people say 80, tomatoes, tomatoes. Um, I've proven at about 80, anything that you can do to get that thing sideways, it'll correct. Now, keep in mind too, the way that this was engineered was with, with the movement in mind too. So when you hit here, it is actually kind of a thicker wall until it sucks into this part right here and then poop, the mag goes in, right? So we stick it sideways, it's still gonna go in. That's what he was demonstrating too, guys. Pull it sideways and it just goes in, no force. Okay. Yeah, it saves you that shit Bosch reload on the move and you just kind of get one of those and it's still going to save you. Right. In, in a sense, which is obviously a magwell is a magwell. It's a bigger area for you to get the, the mag in, but that, you know, you, you can get some, if you really, I know some of the Glock ones, you'll, you'll hit it and it almost would almost make the mag stick if you get it badly enough yeah. where you just, and the mag, your mag there is almost like you got to yank it out and then go again. Right. So that's going to prevent kind of that disaster reload. Right. And then you try it with a regular and it's going to, it gets caught on the outside. So it gets caught on these feed lips right here frequently, as you know. And yeah. that's not moving that piece. So, so that, there that it is. If you, is a game changer. Game changer. And it works. You recommend it with poly grips, not metal style grips. Okay. Or would so it work with both? That's just for the brass. Um, when you purchase one of these, just keep in mind what you what what your end goal is for your firearm. If you are thinking about adding steel grips later, don't I would not recommend going with this only because its its weight is a lot. Okay, mm -hmm. um, for a person who likes to shoot on the weekends and this is something they enjoy doing, they'll enjoy the weight of it. Um, but there's always fine tuning that happens with the firearm every time you change something on it. So somebody who is a pro shooter, like I'll bring out, uh, I, I'm going to call. Jay Christensen on this one. Uh, he recently bought one of these. And one of the, the topics that came up was the, the issue of almost target pass through, right? Or how a gun is going to return based on the fact that you've changed the weight of the back of that gun by so much. So I would recommend this for people who want to shoot uh, poly grips and need that extra weight. That's always a good thing. But if you're going to at any point go with stainless, uh, with steel grips of any kind, I would definitely stay with either aluminum or steel. Um, and if you have a system that works, this is the big thing that I want to stress to everybody. If you have a system that works and you have a stainless steel magwell now, and you like the weight, you like the feel, it performs well, don't change it. Okay. Stay with a stainless steel. So call us, order us, order a stainless steel part. And it's going to, you're not going to change your entire system up. Right. So that's the one, one thing about ordering that I stress. There we go. And they are available now. You can go to the website. Get them. What is the website again? Homecat.com. There it is. Pretty simple. Go all there. Go to, I believe it's the parts area. Scroll down. You see it right there. You can place your order. If you go crazy on it, we have AJ flipping more boxes really <laughs> quick for the, you know, Keep go the crazy. Boxes, on it. <laughs> and yeah. you can call the shop too. Um, any of us will, if you have any questions about, you know, what you want to buy, we, we talk to every customer that calls. Absolutely. Um, to try to help you guys make the best buying decision possible. There we go. Uh, I think lastly here, uh, and then we can kind of round up any live we have, uh, any upcoming matches, events, goals? I know uh, NRA show is kind of sneaking its way around the corner here shortly. Uh, what do you got coming up? So I actually will not be at the NRA show. Um, that is that is pretty far away for me. Um, this yeah. month we are shooting next Next week, I'll be at the Safari Land Expedition match. Um, and then we go to into April. It slows down quite a bit for me in April. In fact, I don't have a major match in April. But May hits hard. So May, the first week of May, I will be at the Magnus Championship down at SUPS. The second weekend of May, I will be at Golden Bullet. The third weekend of May, I will be at the UML Championship. And then we hit into June 
where I'm going to have a couple of matches coming up in that time period. We have um, area one at the end of the month. We also have a match with um, that. We have a limb cat match that we're sponsoring up here. It's, it's going to be a district one um, championship uh, being hosted by Bill. Bill's putting it on with Pete um, out here. And that'll be a real fun, fun match. I hope everybody gets a chance to come out here and shoot that. It's in my hometown. So I'd love to see all of you guys out here. Um, and then there's also another uh, match that's coming up in Cedar, Cedar Valley, I think, with uh, Carrie Palmer. That'll be coming up right around the corner, too. So if you guys are looking for matches in these areas, please hit those up. Those are all, that's a District 2 level, so it'll be fun. Boom. There we go. Jen, Greg, are you going to NRA show? Have you not decided yet? Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. Yeah. I looked it up. I looked up. It's pretty affordable for me. <laughs> so, but I don't know. That doesn't mean nothing. You know what I mean? It's it. It's a good start. But yeah, I, I I would love to go. I gotta I gotta see if I can make it work. But I got a lot coming up here in the next couple months. So we'll have to see. <clears throat> Jen, still no for you? I don't think so. I've got so much traveling with matches. I'm kind of. Yeah, I don't know. I did shot show. I think I'm gonna yeah. do one of those a year. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm even. I'm kind of thinking about it. I miss shot show, you know, for the first time in a long time, and I'm like, oh, maybe I can hit an array. Why not? If I'd missed uh -oh. shot, I'd probably try to go. But I went to shot, yeah. and I they're did. they're fairly close together. It's like, yeah, you know, they're they're only a couple months apart. You dropped a, you know, whatever you dropped in Vegas. Now you're like, damn, there's another one out. And air, you know, especially if you got to come out of pocket for a lot of that stuff. It's like, ah, I just went to Shot Show. Nah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hear that. Uh, any, I think uh, Mike 21 STI said, does it work? I'm assuming the Magwell with Chili grips, or I'm saying that right. Those are the new kind of new guys on the market with the steel grips. Um, it should. Let me see why not. Um, Because, I mean, it's just a different design in a steel grip. So I don't see why. Call them up. Call them up over there and uh, tell them the grip you have. And you want to get their mag well, see what they say. Any live on your side, uh, Greg? Any Anything before we clean up? Jen, anything? I don't think anything else new. Alrighty. I think we're good to wrap this one up. Yeah, we did the discount. The, do you want to see the PCC mags? Yes, oh, yes. yes. PCC oh, mags. Oh, and when can I buy one? I almost dropped the ball on that. <laughs> so, I know you showed the PCC, and I was like, we're missing something. So, uh, first off, one thing I did miss with the PCC is uh, Scott Green and Josh Freilich also got me into using these. It's the 21 degree mount, or the 45. Yeah. Um, those are amazing for around walls. Super fun. Definitely. Razor, right? Vortex Razor? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, EOTech does not make a holographic or a mini dot like this at all. Um, so Scott shoots for Vortex, and I, I happened to see his, and I was like, man, that's that's beautiful glass. I, I need to have that. So he he really got me into that. Um, is using his microdot. But anyways, this uh, is a standard 32 round mag. This is what comes stock with a Colt and it, with a Colt receiver. By the way, I should let you know too why we use Colt receivers. But it it fits nice. It's cute, right? That's cute. Definitely. Yeah, I was definitely gonna say. Do you make it with a Glock Glock mags? Yeah. So I, and I'll let you guys know about that in just a second. So this is the 55 round mag. This is fun. Um, it does way more than clear an entire stage. It's pretty long. It sticks out. And over pony walls, I have to be really careful. A lot of times I actually don't shoulder my gun and I and I kind of just let it hang because it catches on pony walls a lot. But then, then Johnny got um, a wild creative hair up his ass and made a 90 round magazine that feeds. This sucker runs. Can you believe this? It is, Damn. I know, it is longer than my barrel. It's like, it's like a weapon in itself. <laughs> yeah, it's a monopod, so we're going to start marketing these as monopods. That's what I was about to say. You could use it as a <laughs> monopod for stability. Like, that's hilarious. And I yeah. do have a video somewhere of me reloading with this thing. And it actually, when it's in my belt, it comes up and touches the back of my head. So. There we go. It's, it's a little... I'm I'm definitely going to need to reach out to my uh, custom Kydex guy to get, a, get something for that. Yeah, uh, definitely. And, you know, one thing I, I should say is LAG has, uh, LAG has recently redone a lot of their um, competition stuff that they do. And they redid the um, bag pouches for the PCC. And now they sit deeper 
So you're not going to have as much rise with these 55 round mags. They're not going to come up to your ears anymore. And on top of that, it's allowing more security at a lower base. So when you're running, it's not flopping around everywhere. So that's awesome. That's that's an issue I have right now, just running the the 40 round P mags with base plates on them. Right. Um, if I run one of those in my existing um, pouches, it just it doesn't work and I can't carry more than a 30 rounder in my belt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's funny because we were talking with uh, Tim from TACCOM uh, last week on the show, and he came out with the, he was releasing these extensions for the Glock mags and all the stuff. And what were they, 55 rounders? And we're like, shit, no one can get more more ammo than that. No, that's it. Mm-hmm. And then she pulls out a 90 rounder, and we're like, what? <laughs> it's just every every week now someone's pulling out more. It's just what God, can you how long does it take to load yeah. that thing? So I have to grab a box of ammo when I load it and actually just have the hundred round box because by the time I get done reloading, I've probably reset for three people. So I have to come back and say, okay, I only have 20 left because you lose count. It's it's a little silly. So yeah. we had the question about why Glock mags versus Colt mags. And I just, I disassembled the upper receiver so you guys can kind of see what's going on here. But the one thing that is different um, about a Glock versus a Colt mag, as you know, is the supported unsupported theory this has a feed ramp right so the colt comes with a feed ramp whereas the glock has that vacant space where it mm-hmm. does not go in there um these are uzis everybody knows that how long has an uzi been around for forever so when you talk about provable and repeatable results out of a firearm that has been proven okay this system has been proven it is a direct blowback system and it is using these old metal mags but it works every time it runs every single time. Um, I've never had so much as a hiccup with it. Um, there's no gas system to fail with it also. So that's why I prefer these. Well, yeah, I can't stand, I can't stand loading the Colt, Colt mags by hand when they rent them in the autos. I'm like, dude, it it's fucking hard on the thumbs. We got to get the loader with those things. Even, I mean, I'm talking <laughs> standard capacity. Yeah. We're not talking... 90 rounders, 55 rounders, nothing like that. Just standard capacity Colt, Colt mags. You almost need a speed loader because it's going to ruin your thumbs quick. Oh, yeah. It eats up your thumbs. So Lula makes one of those, and I am a big fan of them. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I'm sure you are with those, <laughs> carrying around those. Um, there we have it. So obviously that 90 rounder, some people might inquire about that. That is kind of a one-off deal, is yes. it, right? Is that That's not available to I mean, you can call them and inquire. I'm sure they'll be happy to talk to you, but I don't think that's going to be something that they're going to be putting out. I don't think that that's going to be a standard run. Definitely call the shop if that's something you're very serious about. Um, it's going to be expensive. but um, Yeah, money talks always. It, it does. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This was, actually, <laughs> this was actually brought about because Pete Renzing put on a match that was like a giant, a giant monster match, and it was like 90 rounds on a stage. And I said, man, Johnny, I'm so sick of reloading the 55 round. Can you believe that? He came out and made this thing, and he used it for a while. And I got sticky fingers and swiped it from the, <laughs> swiped it from the old man's shop. So that's my there we go. That's, <laughs> that's funny. That's, that is for sure the, the highest round count we have seen today uh, <laughs> all across all the interwebs. Uh, and she's got one of the only ones. There it is, folks. The rest of you will be reloading, and she will not. Um, but I think we're good on that, and good to kind of wrap this one up, unless we had any live come in at the last minute. Uh, we had a comment. I'm going to pick up a PCC this weekend. What mags do you recommend? He said he was going to pick up uh, the Limcat, uh, the Terron, is it? Um, this weekend, Addicted uh, addicted to Life. What um what mags, what round mags do you recommend? For for the Tron? Yeah. Colt? Um, so standard is 32. You're going to get 32. Um, if you want something custom done, obviously the 55 round mag is the absolute. It, it's it's kind of the sweet spot between the two uh, because guess, guess what? The USPSA stages are not more than 32 rounds. So if you miss that much, you've had bigger problems on your stage. So 55 rounds is a really safe place to be. Always pick up a couple of these when you buy a gun because when you're doing standards, you're going to have to do reloads and you do not want to drop a 55 round mag. So please get a couple of these. Um, this is, I think I got these from Rock River. Rock Rivers, they're metals. Stick with mm-hmm. metal body, but yeah, definitely. 
There we go. All right, we're going to kind of round this one up, wrap this one up. Jen, you usually start us off. What do you have? All right. Shout out to, I'm going to shout out first, uh, Cus Curtis Custom Actions, because I got to run my vector in the first match ever and loved it with the Hawk Hill Barrel and Mark Suley at um, Spartan Rifles. Did all of the machining and gunsmithing on it, and it ran beautifully. Not one malfunction the whole match. It was awesome. Even with rain, it ran great. Um, love that thing. Shout out to all three of those companies. Uh, Macmillan Stocks. I got a sneak peek at mine. I might post a picture. Um, I might post it tomorrow. I got a sneak peek of it. I had Gina do some recon and go in and find it and took a picture for me. So that's coming. Night Force Optics. Uh, Warren scope mounts and I ran their bipod in this match. Loved it. It worked great and it did not bruise my shoulder. I was, when I carried my rifle, it was wonderful. A lot of new gear you ran and you finished 75% of the winner just saying. I did. Oh, yeah. Nice. Um, mm. My GSL suppressor is still in jail, but it's coming. I did have multiple people ask me to please get a suppressor after they laid next to me in this match and listen I, to my break. I agree um, with them. Tommy had a headache at the end of day one from laying prone next to me. He was like, oh, my God. Uh, so that's coming, hopefully, soon, as soon as the government decides to let me have it. Uh, mm -hmm. And under industries, like I said, get a jersey, get a jacket. They have sweatshirts. So that's pretty much what I wore the whole weekend was my sweatshirt to shoot in. Um, so, yeah, check them out. There we go, Greg. What do you have? I have shooters and sharpshooters of Augusta. Um, sharpshooters just did a major overhaul they got a whole bunch of dirt i want to say they're going to be up to the ability to have 10 bays i believe um so they're ever expanding out there um overwatch defense for a super awesome cerakote job uh pdc custom if you decide to come and shoot some long range stuff with jen and i they make a, a really sick chassis and ndz performance for all your awesome gucci glock accessories as well as like they got stuff for the shield, the LCP, the pit, all, all sorts of stuff. Go check them out, and it's all really affordable. And high yeah, quality. I ordered a couple of Glock parts from them over the last couple of days. I needed to assemble a Glock frame. Overwatch defense people—they're doing a Glock trigger, or are they just Cerakote? Just Cerakote. There's a, there's a diff, there's an Overwatch something else that does yeah. a Glock trigger. And it gets I got really confused. Confusing. Yeah, yeah, I got confused. I thought it was the same company, but there we go. AJ, shout outs. What do you got? Um, obviously to limb cat, love them to death. Thank you for making me part of your family. I love it. Um, I love the gear that I run always have always will. It's like a, like a an addiction for me is limb cat. <clears throat> I also want to shout out to EOTech for keeping me in optics. Uh, every optic that I could ever want or ask for is coming from them. I'm shooting a voodoo one by six right now for my uh, three gun purposes. And I couldn't ask for a better optic out of that. Uh, Mac cosmetics for helping me not look like the missing link. Hey, KM Barrels for keeping me in barrels and my pistols. I do really appreciate that. And LAG Tactical for making all of my all of my competition needs as far as uh, Kydex stuff goes. And Icara Shirts. Icara Shirts also is, is doing our business right now. So guys have done a really good job with them. There we go. We got oh, on the mop. What do you got? Terran Tactical. Terran. Yeah. I almost forgot Terran, man. That guy has been so good to me for so many years. Love him to death. Yeah. Thank you, Terran. I was going to hit him if you would have forgot about him because he's definitely on my list too. So definitely shout out to the folks over at Terran Tactical Innovations, Terran Butler, the SDI Combat Master, John Wick 3. All the hype is there. Go check it out. I'm sure you will. Uh, subscribe to the channel right below the video. See the yellow subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Click that to be in tune with every Tuesday we're doing a new episode of the Shooter's Mindset uh, featuring another great guest. Uh, definitely shout out to AJ for spending uh, the time with us here. What is it usually like two hours, hour and a half with pre-show and all involved. So appreciate that. We had a good chat. I pre man, I, I don't think I've only ran into you like one time, which is weird. And it was like at like an after event at some shot show. We were like, I think it was like Palazzo's like the center bar over there. And I was just like, hi. And that was it. And then we just kind of went about it. I never seen you after that. So we never ran into each other, which is odd. Um, what else we have? Uh, if you want to email me, the shooters mindset at gmail.com is a good way to do that. Shout out to the folks over at Tandem Cross. If you're into the Rimfire Steel Challenge thing, want a race gun, or just need parts to kind of rebuild some old Rugers or whatever you got in the closet, take a look at tandemcross.com. All right. That'll do it. Episode, where are we at here? I keep forgetting. 254 of the shooters mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. And we're out of here.